speaker. It's uh, Dmitry. Dmitry, hello. How are you? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm fine, and you? So I wanted yeah. to test my sound. Do you hear me well? <laughs> yeah, everything is fine. I can hear you well. Everything is correct. Yeah. So how do you do? Good. It's a bit late. Yeah, so late. it's Friday. <laughs> I, yeah, I that's, that's Friday. Time. Everybody's uh, dreaming, like uh, sitting somewhere, like relaxing, chilling uh, uh, after the work. Yeah, but today we have a, a great speakers and a great time to to learn something new. So, okay, I don't want to wait any longer. So let's maybe let's start. So just can you share your screen and we'll go. Okay, one second and. By the way, I want to remind you, uh, guys who is watching us, that uh, you have a great possibility to to ask your questions and uh, to find some uh, to uh, to find the answers on your questions. Uh, ask our speakers. So I think that yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, possibility to do it. So okay, I see your presentation. Yeah, shift left with Nick. Yeah. By the way, uh, our first speaker was working in Sneak, so <laughs> today we have a combo. Yeah, yeah it's okay. really fun. Uh, yeah, go 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 okay. go. Okay, I will start. So it's really funny to, to see Camille uh, on the line. So yeah, actually, I will talk about this product. Uh, it's kind of overview, so I don't want to write the code and maybe run some kind of. Uh, uh, demo sessions, but still, I wanted to explain how Sneak work and what SAST, uh, how SAST help us as organization, how we can increase our security level by it. Okay. So let's start. So I wanted to introduce myself. Actually, uh, security is my new profile. So I started working with security only this year, and before I work in as cloud engineer. So I. Uh, mostly on startup environment, so I helped to spin up uh, cloud and DevOps processes on uh, different startup like Empada, Doc, Target, Process, Flow, Health, Work Fusion, and Netform. And this year, so I decided to change my focus and start working with the DevSecOps approach and uh, cloud security in the cloud security field. So let's talk about 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 our company. So Flow is a startup. Uh, we number one on health and fitness applications. It's kind of EOS and Android applications. So we have a huge amount of audience. So it's about 12% of uh, women in the US using Flow. So we have a bunch of money, as you can see, and quite good ratings on App Store. So uh, we, we constantly deliver a value. So we run AA machine learning under the hood and uh, run uh, use it for predictions also we um, make advice uh, to women how to get healthy and how to get pregnant and uh, 2.7 million uh, women get pregnant with flow health and if you're talking about uh, product internal so it's uh, follow super app strategy so we have a kind of tracker possibility we have a content library so it's uh, uh, it's drive courses, uh, uh, events, and so on. Also, we have health assistance, so it's a chatbot. You can uh, reach out our uh, medical experts to help with any problems, and also you can communicate with other persons, and other women, about your uh, with secret chats. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about cloud security, how it's actually uh, default, uh, uh, how it's look like from a, from a landscape perspective. Yeah, so we are, um, we are using Amazon as our cloud provider. So in Amazon, it's quite straightforward security tooling. Yeah, so uh, at first, it's kind of central place to collect all the information about uh, compliance of environment called Security Hub. Also, Amazon have a guard duty. Guard duty is uh, cloud uh, related CM tool. So it's monitor all the event and if something going wrong and something, for example, some users trying to access non-existing API or maybe some some tools wanted to open uh, wrong ports. Yeah, so we can have a uh, alerts with guard duty. Inspector is mostly malware detection tool. So it's agent based. So uh, we can install agent to each machines and run it constantly to find some kind of uh, malware, viruses, and so on. 
Messy, it's all about data. So Messy can scan S3 buckets and uh, find uh, PI data here and uh, help us to, to understand what's the data stored in our lots of uh, S3 buckets here. And also AWS config. So this is a kind of services which collect all the state of the uh, services and uh, collect all changes here. Yeah. So if uh, something uh, changes in our AWS environment, this change will attract an AWS config. So. Yes, yeah, so if you're talking about separation of uh, layers, so customer data can be scanned by Messi, uh, platform applications and access management can be scanned by uh, Expector, uh, Guard Duty, and Config. The same way as operation system layer, it's in, uh, EC2 internals can be scanned by uh, Inspector, and all client side encryptions can go through the Config. And all of these changes are uh, monitored by a uh, central place called uh, Security Hub. Yeah, so let's uh, talk about how uh, security operations look like in uh, AWS world. So, for example, uh, we have uh, imagined team uh, wanted to create new instances, yeah, so, and it's really hard task for it, uh, for them, and if they wanted to, to debug a bit this machine and wanted to open SSH port, and uh, VPN is not the way, yeah. So uh, the team decided to open SSH to whole internet, yeah. And actually it's a security breach just because uh, in the internet we have a lot of crawlers scan all AWS API constantly, yeah. So if we have such such breach, uh, 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 in a time we have we will have a problems here, yeah. So how it look like an operational model on, on AWS, so config, uh, record these changes and security hub analyze is it compliant changed or not is this change not compliant yeah so guard duty can send signal via sns topic to our incident management tool so we're using obsgenie as incident management and uh, incident management have a kind of rotation mechanism and uh, uh, incident response team receive a kind of signals about it so we, we receive notification so okay guys you have a problem now yeah so we need to fix it. If you're talking about uh, AWS Security Hub itself, uh, uh, the, the check I provide is only about ports, but they have a bunch of it here. So they covered uh, this framework. So it's common internet security framework. So uh, in this case, we have a lot of controls and these controls uh, monitor and uh, checked across all of the environment here. So, uh, there are some kind of best practices and critical, uh, so in critical part of systems need to be compliant. For example, uh, we need to avoid using a root account or access, not avoid to, um, not allow to uh, attach uh, access key to root account and so on. Yeah. In this case, uh, AWS uh, constantly monitor it and present kind of report. Yeah. So, and if some someone to, wanted to change this resource and uh, uh, AWS uh, security hub became uncompliant, we, uh, security team uh, will receive a notification and need to fix it. Also, uh, AWS uh, have a foundational security best practices. It's uh, it's extended version of uh, uh, security rules and best practices. So it's kind of advisory. Uh, uh, and it's not mandatory, but still it's kind of a good uh, practice to follow this recommendation in AWS world. So, so for example, uh, not, uh, not create RDS public snapshots, not to steal data and so on. So uh, these instruments also help us to measure security. So uh, it's really hard to uh, improve something uh, if you can't measure it here. Yeah. So if we have some some uh, numbers, you we can, you know, work on security and see our progress with kind of uh, kind of exact numbers. So it's it's funny things and also it's uh, understandable by management, by teams, by everyone. Uh, every people don't even familiar with security. So for example, if we share this information, they can decide, okay, it's more or less okay. Yeah. But if it's uh, 20% of security score, it's not okay. So we need to uh, do something about it. But uh, what's the problem we have here? So in this in this model, all security operations kind of reactive one. Yeah, so we just uh, 
sit and wait until we have kind of notification in our uh, telephone on our Slack. Yeah. So, and in this case, we need to go to Teams and say, okay, guys, you provide a necessary non-compliant change. You need to revert it back. And it's all always it's a painful process just because uh, in this case, uh, all changes always in production and uh, managers expect the results. Yeah. So everybody want to deliver a value. And if you, if you say as a team, you, you need to roll, out, uh, roll back these changes. It's, uh, it's a huge amount of pushbacks in this case. Yeah. And also I wanted to share uh, a, a bit uh, of our way to work. So how we work with our environment. So uh, we follow the DevOps conceptions. So uh, each team can provide uh, infrastructure changes by themselves. So we have a central repository, uh, but it's not a one, one central repository. We started with one, but for now we have about 20 repositories here yeah, for different account in our organization. So in this repository, team can commit their code. And for example, if team needs to set up new services, they need to create maybe S3 buckets, some RDS instances, some uh, users and AIM roles and so on. And we don't have a kind of bottleneck with cloud team just because cloud only create a modulus to improve the speed and uh, I would say streamline this process. But teams need to provide this change by themselves. So some teams have a kind of good uh, understanding about security, some, some teams not, and some teams not wanted to I would say uh, reduce amount of work. And in this case, we can have a lot of security issues. So. Uh, when we work uh, previous year, we focused on increasing this uh, security uh, uh, level of our organization. And this year, so we think about how to save this one. Yeah. So just because if we have a lot of changes, yeah, and for now we have about dozens uh, changes in our AWS setup every day. Yeah. So uh, there are not so many ways to prevent this. Uh, I would say unnecessary changes. So uh, first of all, it's kind of manual approach when security. Uh, need to uh, review and approve all the changes, but it's kind of, it will block our compliance, but also it can go to automated way. And in this case, Sneak uh, really help us just because Sneak, uh, for now, Sneak is kind of passionate organization and drive uh, shift left approach about security. So what does it, uh, shift left mean? So uh, as for now, we have a kind of to stream of changes. At first, the developers uh, shift and right, so developers became more and more closer to production. So previously, developer think about only code and comment, yeah, and everything else. Uh, it's kind of uh, IT stuff, yeah. So they provide code and provide artifacts to some cloud team or IT teams, and these teams install it to production, monitor how it work, and so on, yeah. But for now, and developers who work with pipelines with the ICD process and, and uh, with monitoring tools by themselves and understand what's happening in production. The same way, security starts from, from right. Yeah. So as, as I say, security can control uh, and can receive notifications only after all changes actually uh, installed in production. It's, uh, it's really a bad way to I would say, prevent these changes. So uh, while developers shift and right, security is wanted to shift it left and trying to uh, monitor and maybe prevent the change before it even uh, meshed in uh, master. Yeah. So uh, we, we start thinking about some kind of SaaS tools for our CRCD pipeline and uh, have a kind of review. So as for now, we have a kind of uh, open source solution. So Chekhov, Terrascan, TFSEC, it's uh, great tools. So you can use it in your pipelines and uh, Sneak also can be used in pipelines just because Sneak have uh, two modes. Uh, Sneak CLI, it can be easily installed to pipelines and also Sneak can be run via UI. Yeah. But uh, we don't want to focus only kind of SaaS capabilities, only kind of report things, but we also wanted to focus on a uh, rules life management. So we wanted to increase and our security posture in Amazon. So it's crucial for us that we can easily control and adapt our uh, security policy. So how security policies looks in Sneak? So in Sneak, so for each services, you, you have a kind of profile and you can mark uh, all changes. So kind of all pillars uh, by some kind of uh, severity. Yeah. So for example, if someone wanted to create uh, an encrypted history bucket, by default in Sneak, it's kind of severity medium. But if you wanted to 
to be compliant with ISO, and you have a kind of mm, production and user data inside inside this S3 bucket, you really wanted to uh, increase severity of these changes and to make it maybe a critical one. Yeah. The same way you can control all the other pillars for example eim you can uh, you can tune up uh, what the uh, password uh, policies look like in your organization and the same way you can control overall aws uh, um, settings yeah so uh, also good things that's uh, from these years uh, sneak have all, all also terraform providers so you can just uh, not click in it in ui but also have a kind of terraform integration with sneak and do it uh, automatically so long story short, uh, we start thinking about uh, integrations with SaaS tool in our pipelines and start working and start scanning the, our resources. Yeah, so first of all, we uh, uh, our main goal is uh, at first prevent unnecessary change in block pipeline if we have kind of blocking uh, high or critical vulnerabilities. But before to do, to do this, such kind of change, we need to understand the uh, whole landscape of of, of our uh, code, yeah. So uh, we start working with Sneak in uh, permissive mode. We just uh, run reporting without any action. So we just uh, uh, collecting all the reports and to understand what the kind, kind of uh, what the situation we have in our code and gather statistics. Yeah, and uh, at firstly we create a Terraform reports in, uh, step in the pipeline. Uh, and run it in parallel with this, uh, Terraform Rint. So it's uh, Actually, it's good news since it's, it's, it's uh, quite fast. Yeah, so we spent less than minutes to scan with Terraform. And this uh, reporting step was scan only, only diff of the, uh, our changes. So it's not scanned all the files here, but not only the files which can be, which will, uh, will be changed on this pull request. Yeah. So when, when we gather statistics, we understand that we have not so much uh, non-compliant changes and we, we have by, uh, only two database can be accessible by, uh, from the out world, we will fix it. And after it, uh, we uh, review sneak SA uh, UI. So in this case, we can control how many tests run it. Uh, we, we, can, we can see uh, how many high severity issues we have and we can go deep inside any bugs and understand, for example, remediation efforts here. The same way we have a weighted issue list so we, we can understand towards the kind of cloud posture here. And if you're talking about UI, so I just create kind of uh, GIF to, uh, for you to understand how Sneak looks like internally, yes, yeah? so for real project when we start working for our uh, infrastructure changes, we create we have such pictures as, as you can see. It's, uh, it's a bit outdated. It's uh, early begin to this year, so for now we have a, a bit different one. But still, uh, for example, we can uh, uh, dive in any section and understand what the model we have, and if it's not kind of compliant, what the remediation effort we can have, and what to suggest for our developers. Okay, so we understand that uh, we are ready to, uh, when we uh, fix our critical and high vulnerabilities, we are ready to um, implement blocking step in the pipeline. So in this case, we can use severity threshold. So severity threshold means that if some uh, change, if some files in this pull request will kind of, will have a changes that break uh, our security policies. We just uh, break the pipelines and stop uh, stop it. And uh, user cannot merge this uh, pull request to master. And uh, in this case, they can cannot merge and deploy it to production. So uh, yeah. So uh, as I say fr from my uh, first slide, so one of the biggest uh, how to say obstacle with Sneak from the early beginning is the speed of, of scanning just because when we start working with the sneak uh, and trying to analyze all of our terraform repository is quite big it's contained more than 500 files so when we start working and scan full repository it, it's take about five minutes yeah but sneaks uh, doing a great job and increased performance and for now it's talking about 16 seconds so uh, we uh, decided to move uh, security full scan repository to each uh, master to each 
merging events. So when a pull request merge to master, we run uh, EC report in full scan, and we see the full pictures of our uh, how say repositories uh, in this case. Yeah. So uh, also it's good news uh, when we have a CI/CD uh, in the code. Yeah. So we can uh, we can apply the same configuration for all Terraform repositories. So as for now, we have about twenty of repositories and. All of these repositories contain uh, reports and blocking uh, checks. So we, we have the same level of uh, uh, infrastructure how say policies uh, for each of environments. Yeah. So uh, long story short, what's the result we have? So in this presentation, I focus only Terraform parts, but we also use Sneak to check Helm. Uh, changes and this for now we have a lot of uh, deployment events each day so we have about 15 uh, deployments with helm uh, each days and about uh, five to ten uh, changes of aws infra uh, infrastructure with terraform yeah so and for now sneak scan all of them yeah and we run a breaking pipeline for terraform and prevent unnecessary change and we still have uh, the same and more uh, robust uh, security score uh, how, how we have before and uh, we, do, we don't uh, how to say we prevent all unnecessary change to our production and uh, with uh, without uh, kind of manual effort for uh, from security team so we don't have a kind of blockers and we, do, we don't need to review all the calls and all the pipelines and sneak do it for us and from a security perspective, all we need is just to adjust uh, security policies and roll out it to sneak to how to, to have it uh, in all of our uh, infrastructure repositories. This is from me. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope you have a kind of question, and I want to, to answer it. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dmitry, for your presentation, for your co presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we have some questions here uh, regarding the the sneak. <laughs> By the way, the, the, like uh, the funny question about the sneak, like how does sneak handle your data? <laughs> where like especially in in floor, we are very critical uh, to 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 the, uh, to the data. It's very sensitive, and we know how to. We need to store it. Uh, we need to protect it. So, mm -hmm. how does it work with sneak? Thank you for this question. Yes, so if you're talking about data, so Sneak is uh, static analysis, so it's a SAS running inside the code repository. So this uh, uh, CI/CD plant uh, doesn't have any kind of connection to the data. So Sneak actually don't handle our data. So Sneak handle our configuration. So Sneak prevent any misconfiguration change, and uh, but. Uh, Sneak also secure our data. For example, if someone wanted to create database open to the world or S3 bucket without encryption, Sneak prevents these changes. So it's not, uh, I would say, it's not handle data, but helps to make it secure. Okay, okay. And the second question: uh, uh, Am I understood right, correct, and that uh, this tool from the box can find and automatically fix vulnerabilities in my code? Open source dependencies, containers, and infrastructure is called all powered by Sneak. Thank you for the question. Yes, Sneak have a possibility to fix your code. Yes, yeah, so you you can create automatic PAR. So if you have any issues in your dependencies, for example, you have uh, outdated version of Docker or maybe of your some your dependencies, Sneak have have a possibility to fix it with CLI. So Sneak CLI also have a it's a new feature for Sneak CLI to fix your kind of code. And also you can do it with your UI. So you can create a pull request and uh, Sneak can ap apply your kind of, Sneak can create a pull request with bumping of uh, necessary changes, yeah. But it's really uh, good practice to review these changes and apply it manually and I would say uh, roll out it gracefully just because, you know, it's uh, not a good idea to, uh, to run Sneak in the production and fix it automatically without any kind of approvals, approvals and uh, other workflows. Uh, by the way, do we need do Sneak supports different um, systems like uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab? Or... Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, he seems to have a different integration. So I focus on the packages because we use the bucket in our organization, but Snyk also have a connection with GitLab, GitHub, and so on. And also I focus only on AWS environment, but Snyk also have a GCP and Azure integration. So mm -hmm. you can also do okay. it. And what about the subscription of the license? Like, uh, yeah, like uh, this uh, this tool is not for, for is not for free. I, I think, right? Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> it has it has so many possibilities. Uh, it 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 offers so many possibilities, and I think that it uh, costs some money. Or well, what range do we talk about? It's it's hardly depend on your organization. So uh, we have a lot of developers, so we pay a lot of money. But for smaller uh, organization, yes. So if we have a baby. Five to ten big persons, it's not kind of a huge amount of money. And also, Sneak have a, a free subscriptions. So you can run Sneak for free just for limited kind of amount of features. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And uh, as I know, Sneak uh, also is possible, like you can integrate Sneak in the pipelines for a mobile uh, process and, uh, for more, and, and, and not only. Uh, or for backend, right? So it works for, it doesn't matter, like, w what is it? I mean, it's, it scans dependencies no matter w what is it, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this uh, presentation, I focus only on Sneak AC. So it's Sneak for Terraform and Sneak for Helm. But yeah, so uh, Sneak also have a dependency check and it can check dependency whatever uh, language you use for Python, for Scala, Kotlin, and so on. The same way, uh, Sneak also have a new product called Sneak Code, and this product can actually scan security level of your code. So it's not support all, all the language at the moment, but it's it's a new product, and uh, we'll see how it's performed next year. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Camille, I say that uh, you can get around 30, 30, 300 scans a month for free to get a feel for it. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, that's that's a nice tool, I think, and uh, I hope that we hope to cover, hope, hope to answer some questions and cover a lot. So, yeah, uh, there is no more questions as I see in our chat. Uh, basically, it means that yeah, I think that we can finish our stream today, our meetup. Thank you, Dmitri, for coming, for joining us, and uh, for telling so many interesting things. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think that yeah, a lot of people. Uh, I think that um, today is Friday, and you can <laughs> you can have a rest. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, have a nice yeah weekend. Bye. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dmitri, and yeah, so I want to say everyone, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I want to finish just with one uh, one small thing like uh, about I want to remind you about our um, uh, feedback form that you that you you can you can fill in and uh, it will really help us to to to, to, to go forward and uh, yeah today I want to finish thank you very much thank you everyone thank you very much for joining us so yeah see you see you uh, see you next month <laughs>